<laughs> They're all ready to go. You ready? Watch out. Watch out, Steve. The Rex is coming through. Now, they have four paws with sharp claws, which is going to help them. I really should have considered putting the spikes on my feet to go out the door this morning. My shoveling yesterday kind of backfired. It turned it all icy, but I don't really have... I don't think I need to. Anyhow, Brian, I took your advice. I brought my uh, rain gauge indoors, I melted it down, and I think I got the equivalent of the snow and the rain yesterday at about a 0.65. Camera, you refocus now. The temperature is 22 at 10 a.m. That is up from our coldest low temperature so far this winter. Uh, we haven't said that in a few weeks, have we? It's always been in the time period, though, Wednesday through Thursday. Look at this beautiful Wednesday. Beautiful cold Wednesday, the day after. The fifth storm in nine days to drop more than a half inch of liquid equivalent precipitation. The National Weather Service in Portland, Maine did a a water equivalent on the snowfall the first half of the month, a rain and snow melted. Uh, in Concord, New Hampshire, this doesn't even include yesterday's event, more than 10 inches. It is the wettest first half of winter on record here in the Northeast. It is extreme coast to coast. This beautiful blue sky, some subsidence, even though the high pressure system is way over the Southeastern United States. Here's the surface map this morning. Yesterday's storm, 984 and deepening rapidly over the Canadian Maritimes. Try and get in the sun and out of the wind with you, Steve. Good thinking. And off to the left, uh, there's the uh, 1001 low. That's the Saturday storm last Saturday that went up and spun around Hudson Bay, Canada, and delivered all that North Pole cold air to the deep south and caused us to have a snow rain mix yesterday. Uh, this is most, one of the most widespread icy maps I've ever seen. If you look at the satellite view of our beautiful blue sky, ocean effect clouds over the ocean all the way down to east of Florida. But uh, you look that white shade from New England all the way down to Louisiana. That is snow and ice on the ground all the way to northern Louisiana. This is one of the most expansive ice storms I've ever seen in my entire life. And it's not just here in the east. Check out the images coming out of the northwest United States this morning. Freezing rain and snow right to the coast in Washington and Oregon, where yesterday we saw the record low temperatures, almost like two distinct areas of very cold air. Uh, so focusing on the, the one that's been here all week, throw me an olive branch. Mississippi, there's a place called Olive Branch that got to just below zero this morning. The first time in modern history, our lives, that the temperature in Olive Branch, Mississippi has gone below zero. That's an all time, you know, records have only been around 100 years. Uh, low temperature for northern Mississippi, uh, where the ground is covered with snow and ice this morning. T-Rex coming over. You want to get some sunshine? Yeah, get into the, the solar warmth here. Uh, the sun is getting a little higher in the sky every day. We've got that going for us, and we're going to have one day in a row where it's kind of quiet, although this is the 14th day in a row where it is snowing and the sun is out. At J Peak, Vermont, I mean, a lot of places woke up to snow this morning. The skiing is tremendous. The, the snowpack at Mount Mansfield, Vermont, has moved from 20 inches on January 1st to 50 inches on January 16th. Uh, this is the 14th day in a row of snow, and tomorrow it's going to start to snow again in parts of New England. Really tough forecast for what's going to happen the next three days. Uh, last week, uh, about, I don't know, seven days ago, the Euro had a 945 low in Maine for, for Friday. <laughs> that would have been a monster with rain and snow. Uh, since then, it's backed off, but uh, the stakes are very high. There is kind of a wayward polar vortex that's going to meander right over the Great Lakes. Is just to the south of it, that wave that's coming across Oregon is going to race across the country, going uh, south to the mid-Mississippi Valley and then turning north toward New England. Uh, first of all, I want to show you uh, what happened yesterday's storm. The forecast in 24 hours is for a 954 low there in the Labrador Sea. That is our storm from yesterday. And that's going to try and help block the next storm and miss, make it miss to the south. But uh, this is going to be a play-by-play -play on what's going to happen over the next two days. Very cold air here today. And then we're going to start to see some overrunning of warmer air trying to come back to the north tomorrow. Just a chance of some 
light snow near the south coast. Now, one of the advantages of getting a late start here with T-Rex and Steve as I try and imbibe all the different weather information. You know, I document the weather with a journal and these videos and so many different ways. I'm a part of Coco Raz and uh, it is just almost impossible to keep up with. <laughs> Steve's not used to this ice. Steve, I'll clear your spot. I did clear your spot right over here, but it's not in the sun, right? Anyhow, uh, that low, that storm from yesterday is gonna play a role in the weekend. And there's real high stakes because there is kind of a wayward polar vortex in southeastern Canada. All right, so I advantage of being late in the morning is you get to see the 12Z runs, 12Z. Everyone asks, what's Z? What's Zulu? That's the time in Greenwich, England, five hours ahead of us. So if you get the clock in the upper left, I show this so many times. Uh, I'm going to use the NAM here. Uh, this is this afternoon. You get the lake effect snow going off. Zero Z. That's seven o'clock tonight in uh, one, two, three, four, five. That's midnight. Five Z is midnight. And then we're getting into tomorrow. Twelve Z is seven a.m. And you can see it's more than just lake effect snow. That's some overrunning snow that's starting to happen uh, near the south coast. So it's going to be an expansive area of mostly light snow. It's the gradient between the the cold air that's currently here and the warm air that's trying to come at us from the south on tomorrow night. And then there is an expansive shield of snow uh, coming in here on Friday. Look at that, all the way up to Lake Winnipesaukee. And uh, it looks like snow on the ground and in the air for a lot of central and southern New England on Friday into Friday night. And now if you look at the wind direction, uh, here's the wind barbs. Those arrows kind of show the which way the wind is coming from with the little flag on the end being a short flag is five knots a longer flag is 10 knots this is at 10 meters up to treetop level and then watch it come around from the uh, north and then from the northeast on friday so very cold air coming across a relatively warm ocean cape cod and the islands martin and you all the way to long island and new york look like the heaviest snow for this one but what about the lean cold rule oh yes the lean cold rule boy did that play a role yesterday hey t-rex what's going on he loves the lean cold rule. He just came bolting over here saying, can I go inside? You can almost go inside, Rex. My fingers are cold too. So anyhow, the lean cold rule yesterday, I could go I could go off on all the different weird things that happened yesterday. Anyhow, the heaviest snow yesterday fell from central Vermont, Rutland, Vermont, right up through Whitefield uh, into central Maine. It was a 10 inch snowfall. None of the forecasts from any of the weather service or any of us had 10 inches on a stripe from central Vermont to northern central Maine. I knew in eastern Maine, central Maine, it was going to be bad, but 10 inches and that ice storm was just, it was beyond anything that any of us, I think, uh, uh, really hit on. I mean, Tucker Antico, I met you when you were 12. Tucker is now on TV in Channel 25 in Boston, put out this great graphic and taught us how to do it on Wednesday. On, what's today? Today is Wednesday. On Monday, he put this graphic out from the HRR. He said, you just do a cross section uh, from point A to point B, and it shows you the layers of warmth and cold. And he did a great analysis saying where it was going to sleet and where it was going to freezing rain. That was awesome, but I'd never seen freezing rain on the backlash last evening from 5 to 7. Anyhow, I'm backpedaling now, aren't I? The lean cold rule should apply with this next system on Friday, so expect heavier snows than what we're forecasting to be probably right up into Connecticut, Rhode Island, Cape Cod, and the islands, probably in the order of plowable, three or four inches anyway. That's an early estimate. Yesterday on Cape Cod, definitely an overachiever. Uh, they had forecast zero to two and we ended up with two to three. Jeff in South Dennis yesterday on Cape Cod says 2.5, believe it or not, is the most snow since February 2nd, Groundhog Day 2022. Four inches. It's been almost two years since we had four inches of snow in the mid Cape and points east. Uh, Phil in Brewster said he also had two and a half. As for me, mine goes in the book as three and a half and Logan Airport also three and a half. I don't know how they're measuring the snow at Logan Airport. I don't think it's truly Logan Airport. That's a huge controversy in our world, by the way. And anyhow, that gets uh, Boston now up to 7.1 inches of snow for January. And believe it or not, that's a little bit above the average, uh, even though we're averaging five degrees above average temperature per day so far this month in Boston. Oh man, so much to talk about. So it is going to warm up next week, but it's going to be frigid this weekend. And I'm at 10 minutes now, and I have a lot of and more yesterday trying uh, to just deal with the 
the snow to rain and trying to measure the rain and snow. And I thank you, Brian and Mansfield, for the assist on uh, how to do the, the rain gauge properly. Appreciated that. And so here's the uh, sequence from yesterday. We'll talk more about the, well, the Friday snow uh, tomorrow. Yeah, it's only Wednesday. And then the warm-up next week. It looks like pretty good warm-up there. There's the 14 day for Boston. Very cold this weekend. Everything works in waves. There's only one way to go from there, and that's a warm-up the middle of next week. And we'll talk to you again in the morning. All right, we just came in. This is what we have to deal with every morning when we come in. He's got too much energy. <laughs> if Steve was in here, Steve would be jumping over his head as he runs around. Oh, you want to run out the door again? He ah! just went out the door. To say he's got some pent-up energy is an understatement. <laughs> he couldn't wait to go in, then he couldn't wait to go out. Typical, isn't it? T-Rex, let's go in. Come on. Let's go in. Yeah, let's go in. No? Inside? Yeah. Oh, that some feels good, huh? And then he always gets a treat. He knows how to do it, too. <laughs> good boy, Rex. Yeah, he's a good boy. I'm not done with today yet. I forgot to mention my friends uh, taking advantage of all the snow. Russ Morley this morning at Saddleback. He says, 10 inches of powder. It's perfect. All by himself. We should be there with you, Russ. And also, uh, Weir and Ross yesterday at <laughs> Crotchet Mountain. Nice half a foot of fresh. I don't think there was any mix there. Look at that down there. Oh my goodness. I'm glad I didn't try and walk on that. I thought I did myself a favor shoveling the snow. I would have been better off not shoveling the snow. Treacherous. Treacherous. All right. Now, yesterday's and more. It's 1120. Just came out. I'm not even done editing out the door. I just wanted to get a picture of these snowflakes. They're so huge. That means it's about to change to sleet and rain. 34 degrees here on the water south of Boston. We're not going to have to worry about any freezing rain. Come on, birds. Where's the cardinal? Please. There's going to be a heavy duty refreeze, though. If it stayed snowing like this for a while, it would be passing six inches soon but that ain't happening here all right back to out the door <laughs> pouring out so sad <laughs> who doesn't want an icy driveway huh? why is it sad the ubiquitous thunderbolt anyhow 38 degrees 240 january 16th <laughs> And the snow turned into rain quite some time ago. Uh, so Brian told me I'm not doing the rain gauge right. No doubt. Oh, sloppy. Make fossils out of these footprints when it gets cold again, if it ever gets cold again. So the snow is melting down in there. And I'm at 0.33. So I think I'm just gonna let it go for the entire event. Let's check this thermometer while we're here. What do you got? Oh yeah, it's a lot colder down in the garden. It's only 36. Woohoo! And it looks like it wants to snow, doesn't it? Fog. Future snow. Ross Bud. Get in some powder here. Woo! Here comes where? Powder day at Cratchit. The wind just shifted. It should be getting colder pretty soon. It's going to be some crunchy around here. And it's just getting close to 4. It started snowing at 1 a.m., changed to rain 11.40. So, what's that? Getting close to uh, 15 hours of precipitation. Yeah, if you didn't remove that, or you don't, you can have your tracks until probably early next week. The wind just shifted. Still raining though. Yeah, I'm a tiny bit obsessed with crows. You could say that. And weather.
and a little for the neighbors too. I can't push it with one hand. Go. There it is. Yeah. You're welcome. My pleasure. 451. Looks like there's some brightening on the western and northern horizon. And precipitation pretty much stopped at 4. So that's a 15 hour event. And just for the fun of it, we've got some raindrops mixing with snowflakes here as the temperature goes from 36 to 32 for live at 5 with Chuck Nolan. Took some persuading to get him to come down the stairs. <laughs> yeah, you gotta go, Rex. You gotta go. It's your job. You gotta go outside every once in a while. <laughs> Not going too far though, is he? That thermometer said 34, but it feels like 32 to me. Good boy. Do it. You know what you gotta do. It's cold out. It's gonna be cold until further notice. Monday or so. And more and more and more. Still a tiny bit of snow in it, Brian, but uh, I'm at about 0.53. And it's still precipitating, so I gotta leave it out here just a little bit longer, I think. Where are you going, Rex? <laughs> 29, I've got it. I think it's colder. 8.30, last call for the day. Let's go up there. Careful, be very careful. Don't slide over the edge. Got to go check the rain gauge, bring it indoors, really. That's what I'm going to do. I wasn't supposed to leave it out. Crunch, crunch, crunch. Even where I shoveled, got coated with rain. I didn't think it was going to rain. I'm afraid to walk down these steps now. I need to turn off the phone. Oh, my goodness. It's so icy. Did not think it was going to be this icy. I didn't think it was going to rain after the snow. can't even walk down there. I gotta crunch through the garden. That's the only safe way to do this, really. Grab my rain gauge. It's coming indoors. We're done with the precipitation. Oh, it's stuck in place. Oh my goodness, of course it is. Oh my goodness. Got it. To say I underestimated the freezing rain aspect of this storm is an understatement. There should have been a freezing rain warning in effect. Wow very rare that you get freezing rain right here next to the ocean. Let's see how much water we got in there. Looks like the snow melted. No, it didn't, but we'll melt it. Do it, Rex. Do it. Take care of business. Let's go. It's freezing out. Yeah, I really underestimated the freezing rain aspect to this storm. Seriously. I didn't think on the backside we'd be getting rain. Anyhow, if I were to try and do a deep dive in there, it looks like about uh, 0.6 with still a little snow to melt. Uh, I'll leave it indoors. <laughs> sure you want to go out again. All right. That's it. And more and more and more. T-Rex, we're done. You just went outside.